Okay, I want to tell you about the motion of particles when they're in uniform electric fields. So um, let's start off with um, the way you can create a uniform electric field is if you have parallel plates, um, one plate, this isn't a line of charge, this is actually a, a, me a metal plate coming in like that and another one here. Parallel plates that are charged up, even if they're not charged, those are sometimes called capacitors. Um, but if these are charged, then I'm thinking that our field, let's see if I put a positive test charge here, it's going to be pushed from here and pulled by there. And so it's going to um, go this way. So these are uniform fields. I'm making a uniform field here. It's uniform because I'm, what I'm telling you is, is a, a test charge put here it has the same force on it than if I put it here. Now that might be weird to you because you might think, gosh, isn't it really being repelled by these? So isn't that a big force this way? Yes, and it's a little force from these guys. But over here, uh, this has a big force from these guys and a little force from those guys. And so um, those are always the same. The net electric force on there is still um, the same. It's uh, four newtons for every coulomb you put in there. That's what that electric field is. Okay, so um, if I do put an electric field right here, if I can kick it out just a little bit to get it off of the plate, an electron right here, Here's an electron. Hey, we sometimes say that the charge on an electron, we don't call it a Q because it's a very specific charge. So sometimes we call that E. The charge on an electron is E, lowercase e. So that's like Q sub electron. E is Q sub electron. If I were to just nudge that a little bit, it would zip that way toward the positive plate. And the question is, like, how fast would it be going just before it hit here, that electron? How fast would it be going? Okay, well, um, I know that the force doesn't change. And so the force on that electron, let's see, the force on that electron is going to be um, QE. So it'd be E times the electric field, capital E. I'm not going to put in any numbers here. Um, you can put in the numbers if you like, but it's just a lot easier to um, first do the, the variables. So that's the force on an electron. Now, the, the acceleration of the electron will be that force all over the mass. So it's E, lowercase e, which is the Q of the charge on an electron, times the electric field, all over the mass. If you're wondering where this comes from, it's that... Um, you know, that's what the definition of an electric field is. If you bring this E underneath, it's force per charge. Okay, so um, that's the acceleration. So I want to know the final velocity. So that would be um, V final squared equals V initial squared. Same, same kinematics problem equations apply. Plus um, 2A delta X. Now this is assuming that the electron doesn't gain speeds that are too close to the speed of light. So if we keep our speeds at, at just normal speeds, then this will work out. If they get up to speeds that are close to the speed of light, then, then you get some complications. Okay, so let's say it started from rest. So the final speed will equal 2 times A. This is A all over or times d, the distance between the plates, square root it. Now, am I suggesting that you memorize this equation? Absolutely not. Uh, you should memorize this equation and Newton's second law and the kinematics equation and then put them together and make a terrific salad or a, a terrific equation. Really. All right. Um, the next... The next one. Okay, this can get a little trickier, not much trickier, but what if instead we took that electron and um, let's say it's an electron, so we'll have a charge E, and we send it with a speed V naught, and it goes flying across, but if there's a field here, then the field is, I'm thinking the field is down, isn't it? Yeah, the field is down. I'll draw a few lines of the field. I won't draw all the lines because I don't want it to get too confusing. 
But that means that the electron being negative will go against the field. So electrons always go up field. But it's got an initial velocity. So what it's going to do is it's going to shoot like this and it's going to get deflected. And once it gets out of here, then it will go in a nice straight line here. We'll go in a nice straight line out. But while it's in the field, it's going to be deflected. Now here's the thing. Here's the key. That's a parabola. This is projectile motion, but in electricity. So everything is the same. You do the exact same. If they want to know how far it will be deflected from its original path, so if you turn off the field, it would be this way. It'd move this way. And they want to know this distance. They want to know how far it's going to be deflected by the time it gets there. Then you would need to know some things. Let's call the distance, let's call this distance x. How, how wide the plates are. Okay, well, as you just as you did with with uh, per projectile motion, what we're going to do is we're going to make an x and a y column. Okay, so you're going to say the um, initial velocity in the x direction is v naught. It doesn't have any. It doesn't have any. The initial velocity in the y direction is zero. It has no acceleration in the x direction because the field is all in the vertical direction. But it does have an acceleration in the y direction. It's um, E times the electric field strength. Yeah, you need to know the electric field. That's, that's the net force divided by the mass of an electron. Okay, so we know the acceleration. Um, now, we do know the x. We know how far. This is a known. x is a known. And so... Um, what we're going to do is, in this case, we're going to find the time it takes to go through there. So let's see, delta x equals v naught in the x direction times t plus one half a in the x direction times t squared. But there is no a in the x direction. So in the in the x direction, it's just going to be x is equal to v naught times t. So solving for t. Just like you do with any projectile motion problem, you solve for T and you bring it on the other side, whichever side you bring it to the other side, whichever one that is. So T is look, looks like it's equal to um, X over V naught. Okay, so we want to know how much it's going to get deflected from its straight line path. So again, I'll come right back with the same equation, delta Y this time, is equal to V naught in the Y direction times T plus one-half a in the y direction times t squared. Well, there is no velocity in the y direction initially. It's all in the x, so we'll get rid of that. And so um, I'm running out of space here, so um, I think I'm going to come and put it over here. So delta y, which is what we're after, is equal to one-half a. Now a is this. times t squared, which would be x squared over v naught squared. And there you have it. That's the deflection in the y direction. Okay, again, there's these may look tricky, but it's just projectile motion. But your, is your acceleration 9.8 meters per second squared downward? No, nope, your acceleration is the net force, little e, the charge on an electron, times the electric field all over the mass. Newton's, Newton's second law still applies. Okay, so that's how you handle a charge that's moving in a uniform electric field.